¿Cómo es tu día? ¿A qué horas te levantas? ¿Qué es lo que haces el día? ¿Cuál es el día de, de Roger? ¿Cuál es el día normal tuyo? Por ejemplo, yo me levanto a las 6, lo más tarde a las 6. Y you no, know, the de ladies la I get up is at 6. Si me toca que ir a buscar a mi, este, mi vaca o ir a buscar yeah. a poner cerco, me voy a... If I have to go and look for my cattle, uh, that's so I go and look for them, or if I gotta go fix fences, en, I en go el invierno, and look. Yo miro, in, the, in the summer. Y en cuando el verano, yo trabajo en un ingenio que le dice Montelimar. And I work, uh, like in the rainy season, I work in this uh, building, they call Montelimar. Me levanto a las 5 de la mañana. I get up at 5 in the morning. Regreso a las 8 y 10, 8 I, y 20 de la, de la noche. I come back at 8, 20, 8, 30. ¿Qué hacen ese? Soy estibador. Alex, tengo una foto que le dije que se le iba a enseñar. ¿Qué estibador? Estibador es que mm -hmm. cargamos sacos de azúcar. Ok. Sí, yes, in this, it's a carry-on, like in, in this building. He's the one to move the 100 pound sacks from truck from building to trucks and from trucks to building. La like a storage. La producción que tira el, el ingenio son de 5,000, 7,000 quintales diario. Uh, what uh, what they come, what they gotta carry almost every day is to 5,000 to 6,000 uh, quintals. That's like 100 pounds each quintal. So. Wow. You see, that's 300 pounds on his. No, that's one, two, three, four. Four. Four hundred pounds. On his, wow. Three in his uh, head and one in his back. Here, Roger is pictured with a group of men who moved more than 6,000 pounds of sugar in one day. Roger and the rest of the men are paid four dollars for their labor per day. Roger lives with his wife, Alexandra, and they often take care of their nieces and nephews during the day as well. Roger and Alexandra were married just this past November after he felt God move in him to commit to his relationship with her. Now let's listen as Roger shares his testimony. O sea, yo no visitaba la iglesia. I didn't visit church. Pero como yo, ellos me hablaron de la palabra de Dios. But because you guys were the one to uh, talk to me about the word of God. Y el pastor que se llama Luis Bojor. And pastor Luis Bojor. Venía aquí con otro hermano, fue a hablarme de la palabra. He was coming here and with other brothers and talking about the word of God. Yo les decía, I used to tell them. Después, les decía. Later, later, later. Y después, este, un día que vinieron ellos y les dije. It was a day that you guys came. Y les dije yo, él les voy a dar una sorpresa un día de esto. You know, he told them, you know, one of these days I'm going to give you a surprise. Ellos vinieron por la tarde. He came in the afternoon. Y ahí le dije yo a ella que me buscara, a mi señora, me buscara el pantalón y una camisa, que iba a una fiesta. Y then I told my wife to, look, uh, to uh, get, get my pants and, my, and a shirt that I'm going to a party. Ella se puso como enojada. So she got kind of mad, right? Porque no sabía para dónde iba. She didn't know where I was going. Entonces le digo, vamos te quedar, le digo. So I told her, are you going or are you staying? Me voy a la iglesia. So I went to church. Y de ahí yo no, o sea, yo antes había aceptado al Señor. But before that, I, I accept God. Pero estaba más joven y me but llevó el mundo. Younger, pues. but, you know, just the world just took me. Y ese día me day, gustaron las palabras que dijeron ahí uh, en el mensaje. I like the words that they said on the, on the message that the pastor gave. Y volví a ir. And then I started going. De ahí, este, yo tengo unos animales. So, you know, I have some an, uh, animals. Y ahí es solo la vaca y los bueyes no los hallé ese día. So the boy, he couldn't find the bulls. Y era casi ya como la, esta hora, casi como las dos y media. La so he was like around two, right? He was looking for his uh, Yo andaba bulls. a caballo y entonces, he was me a pie en el monte y le pedí al Señor que si. So he, ya, he got down from his horse and he asked God that. Que yo creía que ya se los habían robado. Because I thought that they stole his animal. Sí, y dije yo, si esta es tu voluntad, que vayas a tus pies, pues. Yo voy a aceptar tu so, palabra de so nuevo. So he told God that if that was his, uh, his, you know, he was, uh, the bulls got stolen, that was the, if that was the way then, let it be. Entonces, wow. ella no fue ese día al, right. al culto. She y didn't go that day to church. Y service. volví a aceptar la palabra de Dios. And, you know, I started accepting God again. Y como ellos también, me llaman, cuando vinieron me regalaron una Biblia. But, uh, but when you guys came, you know, y'all gave him a Bible. Yep. Yo no sé leer, pero I ella me la lee. I don't know how to read, but yep, my wife right? does. Right, he told me. Sí, entonces ahí la conservo, la Biblia, and, and y I una navajita Bible, que me regaló. And a small little knife. Sí, ahí la conservo, it. entonces este, de ahí ya después me casé con ella. And then from then, uh, you know, I got married. 
Because I want to serve God more. En marzo, en abril, en marzo me baticé. In March, I got baptized. Sí, ya me baticé y. Well, and, and we're going to see where's God is going to take me. And, and do everything on, on my power to just continue on God's work. That's why I always thank my pastor. And he thanks you guys too because when you guys came we talked about the word of God with him. After he shared his testimony with us, Roger showed us around his house. First we see his kitchen and where they store their water. Currently Roger takes his cattle down to the river to fill up the big blue barrel full of water to use during the day. For breakfast. In Nicaragua, having farm animals such as chickens is a sign of success. Roger is proud to have three chickens, one of which is seen here. His chickens live with them in their home. Next we visit their bedroom. Their houses are built with dirt floors and aluminum walls. There is no air conditioning or even fans to keep the house cool. At night they also have to deal with insects and mosquitoes which can carry diseases. This is, this is his brother. Hey, Mika, how are you? <laughs> ¿Cómo se llama? Yo, Santos. Santos, that's Santos. the name of his brother. Hija, trete las sillas para acá, hija. And that's his horse. Later, Alexandra agrees to show us how they wash their clothes. Right now, they have to walk down a steep hill to the river because there is no running water in the village. They have to carry their laundry baskets full of clothes, buckets, detergent, and often their small children with them. <coughs> Washing their laundry by hand is very difficult. They rub detergent onto their clothes and then scrub their clothes against large rocks. It takes several minutes per item of clothing to completely wash. <laughs> After a while, Alexandra allows us to give it a try. After one shirt, I was already tired. My back was aching and the sun was beating down on my neck. I gained a tremendous amount of respect for the women who live here and the amount of work they have to do to take care of their families. Even David gave washing their clothes a try. You know what she's saying? Make sure that you tell Roger that you wash his pants. <laughs> Next we visit Gina Garcia. Gina is 19 years old and commutes about two hours to the University of Managua on Saturdays. She is working towards her bachelor's degree in business administration. Gina is one of only a few in Cidalapa who have the opportunity to go to college. When she is not in class, she spends her time studying and helping her sister take care of their families. As we used to have water service since we don't have it now. We have to go all the way down to the river to carry some water to be able to function. So when I get back home, I start helping with the cooking to wash some clothes. And pretty much all the activities to, uh, to run the house. And I keep a little bit of time so I can study. And how do you how do you get there? Como llegas hasta la universidad? Salgo de aquí a otro. A qué hora? Cinco. I have to take uh, one of the small motorcycles, and I have to be leaving around five o'clock in the morning, so to be able to go there. Then I take a bus, and then another transportation. Because she has to travel alone, Gina tells us she is sometimes afraid to go to school. It's kind of hard because I'm not accustomed to be by myself in the city, and now I have to do it, so it's kind of dangerous and, and I'm, sometimes I'm afraid to go. This one, I was like a, almost a year old. Growing up, Gina experienced an unstable family. She never knew her real father, and her mother left them when Gina was one year old, 
to look for work in Managua, leaving her great-grandparents to care for Gina and her sisters. Hey, my great-grandmother passed away when I was seven. My second sister, uh, she was almost ten and she was taking care of us. And my sister was taking care of my great grandfather, my sick sister, and myself. And she was only ten. She was assistant to school. She was running the house. And to tell you the truth, it was very hard. And then my sister ran away with her boyfriend when she was 15. And then I was just by myself. With my sister and my great grandfather. My sister did pass to me, was that right? Last September, her great-grandfather, the only father figure in her life, passed away. She said it was a very dark time in her life. Added to that, her sister, who had been sick most of her life, also passed away in January. Because she has never had a stable family, and because many of her loved ones are now gone, she finds it difficult to worship God. I know that I should be closer to him. Maybe someday soon I'll be doing that. I just know that when people see this video, they will know how where we live. People that know her will know her even more. Will be able to help pray for her and. As the scripture says in James, that if she draws near to him, he will draw near to her. It's the greatest promise in the Bible. And she knows and she understands that, but it's been so hard for her to get close to him. She's hurt so much. He knows you. Gina has her own house, which is connected to her this aunt's is, property, but because she's connected. now alone, she only studies here. What is this? Here is a photo of her on graduation day. Photos are very special and sometimes rare for people in Sidalapa. Next, Gina shows us where she sleeps with her aunt and cousins. Ooh. The, her cousin with her kid. Me, that's her bed, and the other is her uh, aunt. 